The clothes we wear are extremely important for our general well-being, of course, because we have the body temperature that we want to maintain, which is around 37 degrees, and when we do work, when we walk, carry a backpack, our body temperature will rise and we'll get too warm. So we start sweating because the two things that will lower our body temperature very effectively is water and when we have some wind blowing past us or air moving um, uh, to transport heat away. So in Thailand you will you have the Songkran festival where you get wet because it's a warm time of year and it's very nice when it's warm that you get wet and then you have the fans everywhere to blow air past you because you want to transport the heat away from you because in Thailand it's very warm. In Sweden we have the opposite problem because it's too cold. I mean right now it's 10 degrees outside so if the body temperature is 37 degrees and the outside temperature is 10 degrees there's a quite a big span of coldness that we want to avoid and we want to keep our body temperature at 37 degrees. So, we put on clothes to stay warm. So to stay warm, unlike Thailand where you get wet and you have fans to blow air past you and transport heat away, in Sweden we want to stay dry as much as we can. And Apart from staying dry, you want air to stay still around your body and act like an insulating layer, right? Now, when we're out trekking, we also want to have clothes that are very adaptable to many different situations. We want clothes that we can wear both when it's very warm, when it's not so warm, when it's not so cold, and when it's very cold. And we don't want to carry around our whole closet with us because we get encumbered by very heavy backpacks. We want to have light backpacks so that it's fun to be out walking because we're not carrying too much. So, to have this uh, flexibility in the way we dress and still be able to maintain a dry body with an insulating layer of air, uh, we use the layering system to make it as flexible as possible. And the layering system means that you have a first layer that is very thin. And then, if this is not enough to keep you warm, then you have a second layer with something a bit thicker that you can put on very easily on top and suddenly you have a much more much thicker layer of insulating air around your body and you have another layer of clothes that can uh, absorb water from your skin and keep you dry and this combination of being dry and having an insulating layer of air will keep you warmer. And of course we can keep adding more layers depending on how cold it is outside. Usually, I mean we will be going out in spring, summer, autumn. We will not be going out in the winter, at least not much, I don't think. We'll see, but I don't think so. Anyway, we will be good with just having this thin layer and maybe one thicker layer and then because we want to avoid getting wet we want to protect ourselves from rain so we need a, an outer shell to protect ourselves from water from the outside uh, but actually one of the main problems for us is the water that comes from the inside when we're sweating so then we need to figure out a way the, the first way we can do is to 
find a way to create a barrier of air around us despite the fact that we're sweating. And the second we could do is try, when we're sweating, try to get rid of the sweat as fast as possible so that we can get dry uh, and, and uh, stay warm. So, if we get rid, if we start sweating, and then we stop, and we sit down, and we have clothes that enable the water from our sweat to evaporate very fast, then we will get dry quickly, and when we're dry we can get warm. But the evaporation steals a lot of heat, right? So that means that if we have those kind of clothes, the temperature will drop very fast when we sit down. And then, even though we're sitting down, we'll get warmer because we have that insulating layer of air. So the other alternative to have an insulating layer of air, uh, even though we're wet, then when we sit down, we will not be that much colder because we still have that insulation. But so the, the, the body temperature will just keep fairly steady. But on the other hand, we will be wet, which might be very uncomfortable. So then you have to make a trade-off. Do you want to get cold a little bit when you sit down? Or do you want to stay wet for a very long time, which would also be uncomfortable? Cold or wet, or wet and cold, maybe both cold and wet. Uh, so, depending on where we go, we need to figure those things out. So, I've put together some sets of clothes for us. Uh, what I'm wearing right now is a polyester first layer, layer one. Uh, this one is a Heli Hansen, super high quality, super expensive, because it's from Norway. So what I got for us is the same kind of polyester undergarment, but it's Urmari, which is cheaper, and it's still, I mean, it's a good quality shirt, so there's nothing wrong with it. One for me, and one for you. If we would be going out in the winter, we would probably get this layer one as a merino wool instead, because the point is, with this polyester clothes, water will evaporate very fast, water will leave our bodies very fast, so we will stay dry. But, before all the water has left, our temperature will drop very fast. Because we will be, when water evaporates, we will, we will get cold, because that's how it works. So, with these polyester undergarments, we're out walking, we're sweating, we're carrying our backpacks, then we sit down, we put up our shelter, take out our sleeping bags, maybe we start cooking a fire, and as we're sort of slowing down, we stop sweating, and water is leaving our bodies, water is leaving our clothes, I guess, <laughs> I should say, and when that happens, we get cold. So the first thing that when we wear polyester we should be aware of the fact that when we stop and we, we set up camp we will get cold and we will start freezing for a while until all of the water has left our clothes and all our clothes are dry. Uh, usually the body heat and maybe the wind will help us uh, transport the moisture away from us and then once we're dry this will keep us very warm. But we will have a short period of time when we get cold. And in the winter, you really don't want to have that short dip of cold when you stop, because in the winter it's going to be minus 20 degrees, and you can't afford to get cold like that. And that's why you use wool instead of polyester in the winter, because wool will not dry up so fast as polyester does. But on the other hand, wool will keep you warm even when it's wet. 
but we don't want to be wet, we want to get dry as fast as possible, so that's why I chose some polyester for us. Our feet, on the other hand, will always get wet, we can't do anything about that. We will always have moisture around our feet, more or less, a little bit, or maybe even a lot. So, for that reason, our socks are always going to be wool. And then, in socks we also use layering, where we have one thin sock first, and then on top of that we put on a thick sock. And both of these are wool socks, a bit of polyester in them to make them a bit more durable and strong. But uh, the point of, of having the wool is that it will keep our feet warm even when they're wet. Uh, so we'll never be cold. And the point of having two socks is that when we're walking, uh, in shoes we'll always have a bit of friction in the shoes. But with two socks, the socks will be rubbing against each other. Uh, which is a very good thing when you have friction going on. Because if uh, the skin of our feet would be rubbing against the shoes or against the sock, eventually it would get blisters and chafing and wounds on our feet and pain and uncomfort. Uh, so when we have two socks we'll avoid getting blisters and those kind of things. So for both of us we start out by having this thin layer and a pair of socks. And that will keep us warm for the most part. Uh, when we set up camp sometimes we want to be able to get dry instantly. And most of all, we want to make sure that we're always dry when we go to bed and we want to get some sleep. So, we have dry sacks. One for me and one for you. And in these dry sacks is the same copy of one first layer and two pairs of wool socks. So this, since we have it in a dry sack, even if we get water in our backpacks for some reason, we know that these will always be dry. And then we can always change it into a dry set of clothes if we are too cold for some reason, or especially when we want to go to sleep, because when we're sleeping we want to make sure that we're dry, so that we not wake up cold in the middle of the night. So, then outside the first thin layer we want the second thick layer and for that there are a few choices. This one that I'm wearing now is the Helly Hansen original fiber fur coat. Um, this, is, this is the first invention of this outer layer with polyester that was made and the Helly Hansen coat has sort of kind of like a, a neoprene inside it's or it's it's like a weave so it's kind of hard I guess and the outside is a very soft fur and this is super warm uh, super warm addition at any time uh, what happened when this started to become popular was that the Americans said that, come on, we can't let Norway take all the credit for getting the best clothes in the world. America is supposed to be the best in the world, so we have to do some improvement here. So what America did was that they made the fleece shirt. And the fleece is just like the Helly Hansen fur coat except that it's a, a lot softer and finer and this is black so I'm not sure if you can see the difference but the Helly Hansen is kind of more gritty and the fleece is softer and the good thing about fleece because it's so soft is that it's very comfortable the bad thing is that it's v very 
it's not very durable. So with fleas you have to buy new shirts all the time. With the Heli Hansen it will last for many years. But it's essentially the same thing. It's both polyester shirts. It's just that the fleece is more comfortable and the fiber fur from Heli Hansen is more durable. But they fill the same purpose of of getting a second layer of clothes. Now I have for myself uh, um, a fleece shirt and I also have fleece pants. If I want to add a second warm layer on my legs I can use this but I haven't been able to find that for you so I guess you have to find that for yourself. But uh, if we know that we're going to a cold place it can be good to have to be able to layer both your legs and your body in this way that you have a thin layer inner and then you have a thicker layer that you can add but usually for the legs you don't really need it actually because getting cold legs is not so bad right? maybe for women it's a bit different because you can get urinary infection easy but at least for me, I rather like having just thin, sh sh thin pants on my legs, and I can get a bit cold on my legs, but it's not so bad. As long as I stay warm in my body, for me, that's perfect. Uh, now, another alternative are these knitted fleece shirts that I got for both of us. And these are actually, I've never tried this before, this is a new thing, and what it is, is exactly the opposite of the Heli Hansen shirt. So the knitted fleece shirt has the soft fleece on the inside, and the sort of, uh, sort of, uh, a knitted part, a neoprene similar thing on the outside. So these are more durable than the fleece. Uh, so it would be more like the Heli Hansen fiber fur, I guess. Uh, that it would, it's more durable and still warm. But yeah, it's not Heli Hansen. This is Urbari, the cheap brand. I'm not sure about. Uh, I think I think this will be quite good, good enough. Um, we may want to exchange this for Heli Hansen fiber furs eventually, but yeah. So one for me, one for you. Uh, another possible alternative, if we wouldn't want to go with this is to go with wool even for the second layer. So in the winter you can have the first thin layer merino wool and of course you can also get the second thicker layer as a wool alternative. So this is a wool shirt that you can put on and this will keep you extremely warm in the winter. Uh, almost too warm. I, I, I don't use this very often because it's very warm. And this is also this type of new wool that is not it's not so rough so you can have it on your neck without itching too bad. Uh, and yeah, but I mean the good thing about wool is that it will keep you warm even if you're sweating and you're wet. But I think uh, for us, the fleece fleece options are better, so this one I will probably be leaving at home. Uh, the wool is also a bit thicker or a bit um, more heavy than the fleece, so it's a bit more to carry, and I don't think it's quite worth it. What you might want to consider is I got this one for you. This is a fleece shirt that has and inside with a, a fabric that is very very um, tight woven so this is not waterproof but it is windproof 
So if you go out to the mountains and uh, you start sweating, so you will be wet. Um, and then, because there are no trees up in the mountains, in the high mountains, uh, the wind is blowing quite fiercely. And then when you get wet and the wind is blowing, then you, all of your body heat is disappearing with your wind and <coughs> your sweat is evaporating very fast, which is also stealing a lot of body heat from you. So then, one of these windproof garments could be excellent, because it will allow you to keep... You, you will still have sweat evaporating, but it will evaporate slower. So you will get drier and drier, but you will not get dry too fast so that you will stay warm more easily. And this one, I actually haven't got one of these for myself, so maybe I should buy something like this for myself, but yeah, at least you can stay warm that way. What we have next is the raincoat. So, for you and for me, now this is packable raincoats that you just stuff in in their own pocket. So there's a pair of pants. One pair for the both of us. So then you would just have a thin layer at the bottom. You would, could have a thicker layer, like a fleece or something. And then you have a waterproof layer if it's raining. The thing with the waterproof layer is that it keeps water out from the outside, but it also keeps your sweat in from the inside. So, since the sweat will never leave your body, you will just keep getting wet, and if you get wet from sweat, you're going to get cold eventually. So this is nice when it's raining, but if it's not raining, you would never be wearing this, because you just get cold too fast. And the jacket is the same. If you just stuff it in its own pocket, and have a jacket. And of course, when it comes to rainwear, we want the best quality. So this is Helly Hansen for both of us. And Helly Hansen makes really high quality clothes, but they're a bit expensive. But when it comes to rain clothes, I think it's worth it to pay a little bit extra. Now for pants, what I'm wearing now is a bit different. I mean, you could go with fleece pants. But the thing with fleas is that it's not very durable. And you will quickly get a hole in these. So what's very popular is this kind of pants. This is blue wear that I'm wearing now. Um, and this is a mix of 65% polyester and 35% cotton. And the cotton makes these very durable. The bad thing is that the cotton will soak up water and it will keep you wet for a long time if you get wet, which you probably will. Um, so, I mean, these are this type of pants are very popular because they're so durable, but they're actually not very good if you want to stay warm because the cotton in them will will keep you wet, and when you're wet, you get cold. So, a better option actually would be to just get a pair of these Adidas or Nike or Puma or whatever you want training pants. These are polyester and they're very cheap so even though they're not durable they I mean they, they are so cheap that you can just buy a new pair when you get home if you break them. So this is a good option for pants and like I said, 
I don't think you need to have that thick pants on your legs, usually. Uh, so, I think it's fine to just have a pair of training pants. Um, a possible option is to go with something like this with Gore-Tex. So Gore-Tex uh, has a membrane that is almost waterproof. So if it's raining a lot, you'll get wet. But if it's not raining a lot, you can stay sort of dry. Personally, I've tried Gore-Tex and I think Gore-Tex is kind of crap. I don't like it. And also, it's super expensive. Those pants probably cost like 2,000 crowns. Uh, a Gore-Tex jacket, just to keep you out of the rain, is going to cost you maybe 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 crowns. Whereas this one, even though it's heli hands and super high quality, this one only cost 1,000 crowns. So, yeah, I don't, I don't recommend Gore-Tex at all. I think it's bullshit because eventually, if it's raining a lot, you'll get wet anyway. And then, what good is your expensive Gore-Tex jacket if you get wet anyway? Uh, for a day trip, it could be great, but I don't like it. I think this is much better to have a 100% waterproof jacket and 100% waterproof pants. If it's raining, you put it on. If it's not raining, you just stick with your fiber fur jacket. And that way, you can stay warm. So, the main points about clothes is stay dry and keep air around your body. And if you fulfill those two, you will stay warm. But it is impossible to fulfill those two, which means that we have to choose a compromise. And the compromise is, do we want wool, which will stay wet, but still provide warmth? Or do we want polyester, which will dry fast, but be cold while it's drying and while it's wet still? And I think for us, the best choice is the polyester light layer. Uh, so we will keep the layer one, the layer two thick layer, and we will keep probably a couple of different options for those two layers, because if one gets wet we can change into the other. And then we'll keep the rainproof shell as well. And that's all the clothes we need to go trekking and stay warm.